We've been waiting a while for this new update, VirtualBox 7. That's right, a new major release for VirtualBox with significant improvements. The last major release was made sometime in early 2019, and this right here is actually VirtualBox 6. For those of you who had forgotten what it looks like, here on the left-hand side, you can access your virtual machines, and then towards the top, we have various different options, tools, but very minimal, not much to it. I just wanted to show you this before we move on to the VirtualBox 7 edition and talk about some of the major updates that were made. And here's a complete change log of everything that has been updated. We won't be talking about everything here, but we do want to focus on some of the really nice tools and GUI rework that they've done. So let's get over to VirtualBox 7 so you can check it out. Is it time to upgrade? Is it not? I'll let you decide after this video but before we get too far let's talk about what is supported under virtualbox 7 there is a developer preview for mac os the intel version or the arm 64 m1 or m2 version so you can check it out on that platform if you have one as well what better way to turn that mac os into a machine that can run linux of course you have windows linux and regular old mac but let's move on and get to the exciting part and here it is a virtual box seven and one thing you'll notice right away is dark mode has been introduced one way to see that your app is outdated is it not having dark mode built in now we do with the latest version of a virtual box some of you won't care but now the default setting will be to follow whatever your desktop settings are set to if you go into the file preferences and down the interface you'll notice color theme now can be light dark or follow the system settings i'm going to keep it here but let's talk more about some other things here. One impressive thing is for EFI, we have secure boot support added. You can enable secure boot by checking this box now if you want to emulate it on your system. Another great thing is that you can now fully encrypt your virtual machines, including virtual machine config log files or even save states. There was options to encrypt before, but not necessarily a full encryption which I'm super happy to see. Now it seems like we can actually fully encrypt our system to keep our systems away from unwanted eyes. Moving on to one of my favorite things, you'll notice the GUI has pretty much stayed the same. Not too much new besides that dark background, which is fine by me because I'm not a big fan of huge changes to the GUI when you're so used to using something for a while. Sometimes companies go overboard when they do it. But one thing that has been added is over here, if we go to the cloud, we can now add in cloud virtual machines locally here in our virtual box and control them directly from our local system. Absolutely fantastic. Of course, you're going to have to have an Oracle Cloud account in order to do this. I'm not signed in or signed up right now, so I can't really show you this. Just know it is an option for those of you who do use the Oracle Cloud. And if you thought that was cool, there's even a better thing in my opinion. If you hit new, now you have unintended installation access. You can check this box, specify a few things for your operating system. Of course, only if the operating system supports it, but a lot are going to. Then you put a username in, a host name, and a couple other items, and then you can have your installation be done for you without going through all the steps. What's even better is you can select for guest additions to automatically be installed after this operating system gets installed or even a specific version of guest editions that you want to install. Anyways, that's not my favorite thing here. What my favorite thing is, is the ISO image. We did not have this option before. This is an absolutely amazing addition. You don't have to go into settings after the fact and select what ISO you want to use to install an operating system on the new virtual machine that you're creating. Instead, you do it directly from this dropdown and you can specify anywhere on your system where the ISO image exists. Definitely a plus one for VirtualBox 7. And for me, just this one update is enough to make me want to go to VirtualBox 7 right off the bat. Absolutely fantastic, simple, but very effective. And if you think the same about this video, make sure to smash that like button. Now also another thing when you're creating a new machine, I'm just gonna do a Linux Ubuntu edition. Here in the hardware, notice you can specify the base memory, but now you can also specify the amount of cores that you want to use. This is a little confusing because processors doesn't actually mean processors, it means cores. 
I have 16 cores on this processor and it really just utilizes those cores as processors for the virtual machine. So that's why they call it that. Also another fantastic option is you can enable EFI BIOS by default here through this checkbox. This wasn't available before. You had to dig down in the settings again and find that. Instead, they are really streamlining the process for setting up your virtual machine. I love the attention to detail. Let me know in the comments section below if you're going to upgrade to virtual box seven after already seeing these things that I've mentioned. Another thing, the media manager is much better now. It's not its own dialogue box. It's actually built into the virtual box manager screen. As you see here, I can manage my individual virtual disks directly from here, meaning I can make them bigger, smaller, what have you all directly in this one dialog. Before it was a little hard to get to, and not only that, it didn't have as many options as it does now. Notice you have optical disks, floppy disks, hard disks, and you can add, create, copy, move, release, search, go through its properties, and refresh the screen from the top. And you have all the information about the individual disks that you have selected below. Now I'm gonna start a couple of these virtual machines up on my system. So you can see on the right-hand side how we have some information presented to us. A little bit of a dialogue here shows that our virtual machine is powering up and here we go, it is in fact starting. Nothing really new in that process itself, but we see that both are running right now. What I want to show you instead is the activities under the tool section. Again, if you click right here, hit activities, you'll notice now you have various different information available to you directly from the virtual box manager including all of these things. Notice the virtual machine name. So I got 20.04 versus 22.04. It's telling you how much CPU usage you're using, RAM usage, and many more things. You can always specify which things you wanna see. For example, maybe I don't want the disk write, disk read, or any of these things here. I can break them down. And really all I probably care about is like RAM usage, the CPU for the guest, and maybe some networking information. Anyways, you can see that information in here and you even get a small pie chart of the total usage and what's actually using it. So look, user space is using about one to 2% versus kernel space is using about 1% of the total CPU. Then your RAM usage is over here as well. So it says 33% of it is currently being used out of the total 31.92 gigabytes. So it's saying, 10.77 gigabytes is used, 21.14 free. Absolutely fantastic because if you're running multiple virtual machines, especially in that cloud environment, you would love to be able to see this. The UHI has seen a bit of an overhaul with these great tools so we can see how much resources are being used with each of the VMs. Enterprise hypervisors have already offered for quite a while now. It's great to see it here in VirtualBox. Another fantastic thing, but you won't believe it, it gets better. If you select one of these virtual machines and you click the dialog here, you now have an option of hitting the file manager and directly sending a file over from the host machine to the virtual machine. First, make sure to put your username and password below as I'm doing real quick. Then you hit open session and notice everything on that machine for the root directory gets loaded in, all the directories under that. So if I wanted to access my home user directory, Notice then I can move any file directly from my host computer over to the virtual machine or vice versa. A fantastic thing, I've been wanting this for quite a while. Yes, you had a drag and drop feature that sometimes worked, sometimes didn't. I much prefer this version of the file manager which allows you to actually select a file, tell yourself where it's going, and handle it through the virtual box manager instead of working in some drag and drop feature or copying and pasting it and not knowing if it's going to work because you need guest additions versus you don't have guest additions installed. Anyways, that was a mess. I'm not going to get into that rant, but those are some of the big things that are now a part of virtual box seven. Again, if you want to check out even more of these updates, you can definitely check it out here on their change log. I will post a link in the description below so you can check this out. Again, we all understand that VirtualBox is great because it's a free software available across platforms. It's easy to use, easy to spin up, and has been reliable for a very long time. So I'm sure a lot of you are going to be excited to upgrade your version to VirtualBox 7. Let me know what updated feature you like the most in the comments section. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.